A lot of people are in search for the best, the ultimate, the most productive desk setup. I'm going to show you my productivity desk setup for 2024 to spark some ideas that may inspire your own desk setup. But I don't claim that this one is the best or anything like that. It's a setup that just works for me and it just might work for you too. Most of the time, ultimate desk setups focus on the what, meaning what you should buy. But I'm also going to show you the how and the why, so you can choose to implement what is most meaningful for you. Before we even get into the gear on my desk, let's start with a few tips. For me, there are three elements to a great desk setup. It must be comfortable, flexible, and plug and play. You know, I spend a lot of time at my desk, often over 12 hours per day. So it's super important that my setup is really comfortable. I wouldn't be able to get through the day or stay focused on my work if my body was aching or in pain. But having a desk setup that allows you to go the distance takes a little bit of thought. I'm talking about ergonomics. And there are a few ingredients to how you create an ergonomic workstation. My feet are flat on the floor. My knees are level with my hips. My wrist is flat on the keyboard. My back is supported. My monitor is an arm's length away. My eyes meet the top of the screen. You know, before I had my current setup, I would get these terrible sensations in my hand, wrist, and forearm. It was literally unbearable to type. I dreaded being at my desk, and it was nearly impossible to get my work done. When I realized I had carpal tunnel syndrome, I thought it was a bit absurd. Typing away at a desk is such a sedentary activity. How could I be injured? Fortunately, I realized a few quick fixes. Adjusting the height of my chair, armrests, and monitor would alleviate all of that discomfort and allow me to keep cruising. That's why ergonomics and a comfortable desk really matter. You know, a workstation may be used for a multitude of purposes. Typing, writing, gaming, entertaining, even eating, you name it. Having space and being able to rearrange things quickly, depending on the task, is a huge benefit. Another element that makes a desk ultra flexible that I can't recommend enough is the ability to switch between sitting and standing. Yeah, everyone talks about this, but even an ergonomic workstation can lead to fatigue and aches from being in the same position for too long. This can be remedied by working while standing. However, it's not enough to just have a standing desk. The setup must adapt to you and your posture, whether you're sitting or standing. When I stand at my desk, I can quickly adjust my monitor height so I remain in a comfortable ergonomic setup. Monitor arms and proper cable management are great for this. And finally, I like my desk to be plug and play. This means as soon as I get to my desk, it's ready to fire up without needing to do more than plug in a single cable or click a button. A USB-C cable is your greatest ally here. Sometimes the biggest barrier to productivity is just thinking about the incremental steps that you need to take to get started. By reducing the friction between the thought of working and the act of working, it's faster, easier, and more enjoyable to get going. So you've heard my three tips on how to think about your setup. Now let's take a look at my gear and I'll note the price I paid for each as we go. Let's start with the desk itself. This is the Uplift Desk V2 commercial with a one inch thick bamboo desktop. The surface of the desk is 48 inches wide by 30 inches deep. It sits atop white desk legs with a crossbar between the left and right legs which makes the whole thing super stable, even at the highest height with all this gear on top of it. There is a matching white keypad that can accommodate four saved heights. 
and a white dual power outlet in the back right corner. I love this thing, and I may do a separate review just on the desk. I paid about $700 for the desk, advanced keypad, and cable management accessories, but the desk alone would have been about $610. Moving up, I have the LG 27-inch 4K computer monitor. I wanted a 4K display for ultra-sharp text, photos, and videos, and the 27-inch size fits my desk well, with adequate room on the left and right. I paid $480. Now, the monitor connects via a single USB-C cable to this brand new 2023 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro chip. It has 18 gigabytes of memory and a one terabyte SSD. I purchased it on sale for $2,000 and it has been a leapfrog upgrade from my prior 2012 13-inch MacBook Pro. While I really like this monitor, it was originally purchased for use with a Windows PC. Honestly, I would buy something else today because I don't believe it supports 4K when connected to my new MacBook Pro. The monitor and laptop are held up by the Amazon Basics Premium Dual Monitor Stand with the optional notebook arm mount tray. Now, the dual monitor allows me to position the monitor and laptop exactly where I need them for an ergonomic setup while sitting or standing, and they easily support the weight of the 27-inch monitor and 14-inch MacBook Pro. They also allow me to move the screens away if I just want more open desk space. The dual monitor arms were $190 and the tray another $25. To control the laptop while it's up on the notebook tray, I used the Microsoft Sculpt ergonomic wireless keyboard. I originally got this as a set with a matching wireless mouse for $97, but the mouse died on me. I actually had two of the Microsoft Sculpt mice die on me, so I would not recommend them. The keyboard, however, has been fantastic. It has an unusual layout that takes some getting used to, but that's the whole point. It mimics the natural flared position of the hands and arms, which I find to be a more comfortable typing position. Despite the unique layout, I have no problem switching back and forth between this and a standard keyboard layout. After the included mouse stopped working, I picked up this Logitech MX Master 3 Advanced Wireless Mouse in Graphite for $100. It can connect to the computer wirelessly via a USB dongle or Bluetooth, which I use and supports memory for up to three devices. This mouse offers super precise movements, horizontal scrolling, and built-in page forward and back buttons. Most of all, it is unbelievably comfortable. I love this keyboard and mouse combination. By the way, if you're finding this helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now for lighting. For lighting, I have the BenQ Screen Bar Plus setting atop the monitor. I got this to reduce eye fatigue caused by glare and reflection on the screen. It includes this wired controller that allows me to adjust the brightness and color temperature. And it even has an auto lighting mode thanks to the built-in ambient light sensor. I got this on sale for $85. Actually, I first bought the more premium BenQ Screen Bar Halo that is both front and back lighting and a wireless controller. However, the wireless controller was so unreliable, rendering the light useless. I missed its backlight though, so I've got this Uplift E3 LED desk lamp in white that was included for free with the purchase of my desk. It also allows you to control the brightness and color temperature, but it's finicky and I wouldn't recommend it. I do recommend having some type of bias lighting though to reduce the environmental contrast from only a single point of light, especially if you're working in a dark room at night. On top of the BenQ Screen Bar Plus, I have this Logitech webcam that I got for $60. It offers far superior video quality than my work PC's built-in option and allows for a subtle background blur that gives my video calls a nice bokeh effect. The monitor, laptop, and webcam all connect to my docking station from Pluggable. It supports up to three monitors with 100 watt charging and includes four HDMI, two display link, four USB-C 3.0, 
two USB-C, Ethernet, and one SD card slot. I wanted a docking station with Ethernet since neither my work nor personal machines have an Ethernet. In addition to faster internet speeds, the docking station allows me to have a true plug and play setup. I just connect my laptop to a single USB-C cable for a dual screen setup and charging all in one. I paid $280 for this docking station, but I would look elsewhere if I was upgrading for a more reliable connection between the laptop, monitor, and ethernet. Now near the docking station, I have this Peak Design mobile wireless charging stand. It's one of numerous accessories for my Peak Design everyday case for iPhone 15 Pro Max. See the link in the description for my review of this phone case. Now, I love how quickly my phone magnetically connects to this charger in either portrait or landscape, which also gives me access to standby mode on my iPhone. Like all Peak Design products, this charger is probably over-engineered with super high quality materials and a durable hinge that should last forever. I got this on sale for $64. To the left of my desk, I have the HP OfficeJet Pro 9015 all-in-one wireless printer, so it can print and scan, which I got for $230. I gotta say, it's a real luxury just having a printer. While I may not print that often, when you need it, well, you need it. The printer is sitting atop the Bonlow White Rolling Office Filing Cabinet, which has three drawers for organizing my files and desk supplies. I wanted a white cabinet to match the look of the white legs on my standing desk. Uplift sold one, but it was double the cost of this thing here, which I got for $140. On top of the printer is a Dome Classic noise machine, also in white. My office is a multi-purpose room that also functions as a guest bedroom, a weekend nap room for our child. So while this is primarily here for a peaceful nap time, it also helps to drown out ambient noise when our kids are watching TV in the adjacent room or otherwise wreaking havoc as kids tend to do. This noise machine was $38. I've tried to keep the desk clutter free from cables for a clean look and easy usability. Moving underneath the desk, you begin to see the rat's nest of cables going on. All things considered, I think it's reasonably clean and the cables are only visible when you poke your head down here. The cable management supplies were included in the cost of my standing desk. Saving perhaps the best for last. This is the Steelcase Gesture office chair with the Cogent Connect upholstery in the nickel colorway. It has a shell back, additional lumbar support, and wheels designed for hardwood floors. I paid almost $1,000 for this chair three and a half years ago, which I thought was a bit insane at the time. However, this has been one of the greatest purchases I've ever made. Like a bed mattress, I log a lot of hours each day in my desk chair, which I used to justify the investment. It is far and away the most comfortable chair I have ever used and allows for endless adjustments so you can really dial in the perfect fit. If your budget allows, I highly recommend this chair. When standing, I pull out this Topo Mini by Ergo Driven Anti-Fatigue Mat in gray, which matches the color of my Uplift desk mat, which came free with the desk. The Anti-Fatigue Mat not only helps me stand more comfortably, but the unique contours allow me to stretch my feet so I can stand comfortably longer. A few random things to round out the desk tour. I bought this fake plant for $5 to add a touch of greenery and here I have a stress relief scented candle with notes of eucalyptus and tea. It was a gift and I never light it and I can only smell it if I stick my face right into it. But I like the thought of having stress relief aromatherapy nearby. You probably noticed there are a few other things going on here, including a couple of mounting arms, microphone and light, but I'm not gonna cover them in this video. Those are for my filming setup, which I may cover in a future video. Leave a comment if you'd like to see that or have any other questions. All right, so the grand total for all that gear is $5,564. Now, I was a bit shocked when I totaled that up, but a couple things to keep in mind. These items were purchased over the course of several years and not all at once. And the MacBook Pro contributed $2,000 to that total. 
chances are you already have a computer. So that brings it to $3,564 for the rest of the setup. By no means is that cheap, and I don't necessarily have the best in any of the items I showed you. A good productivity desk setup is clearly an investment and often cobbled together over time. I hope you found my top three tips for a great desk setup helpful and got some ideas for your own setup after seeing mine. Thanks for watching. Consider giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.